Now, we have a fabulous person. <laughs> I was going to say doctor, and then I thought, are you a doctor, Claire? Uh, I'm not medical, but I'm a surgeon. Yeah. We have a fabulous doctor here, Dr. Claire Treadgold. Now, when I first read this, I thought it said thread gold, and I thought, oh, isn't that cool? She's like, her, she's done a deadly, deadly tread gold project. <laughs> deadly threads. It's, um, yeah, anyway. There's a name for that, isn't it? Where somebody's job sounds like, the, uh, like their name. Their name sounds like the job they do. Anyway. Um, like, I've got a plumber. His name's Pipeman. It's actually true. Pipeman, the plumber. Um, <coughs> anyway, Claire uh, is the National Manager of Research and Evaluation for the Starlight Children's Foundation. And she has an incredible wealth of experience in the not-for-profit area and in doing beautiful social change projects. Claire, would you like to tell us all about Deadly Threads? And uh, just to let you know, apparently the genesis of my name actually was Threadgold. They weaved cloth for kings, but then someone thought they had a lisp and it was really Treadgold. So <laughs> there is a lovely story attached to it. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to them, emerges part, um, leaders emerging, past and present. Um, I am lucky and privileged to live on the land of the mighty Bundjalung people up in northern New South Wales, in the shadow of Wollumbin, which is otherwise known as Mount Warning. So I'm, but I love coming down here, and I actually have an ancestor who was also a convict here as well, so I feel very privileged to be here. I would also like to start by acknowledging my partner in crime for this project, uh, and really the creative genius and lead on her name's Bridget Waters, um, who lives in West Australia and unfortunately couldn't join us today. Uh, she is really the expert in this area in arts and health, and that's her role within Starlight. So I'm very much talking about her work, um, and I'm lucky enough to get to evaluate programs such as hers and, and talk about them. Uh, and what I can talk about, though, in, with uh, great certainty and joy, is the actual work that Starlight does, our programs. Um, so it's an organisation that has been in existence for 30 years now, delivering services uh, in partnership with health professionals. Uh, we have a model of believing in the total care of young person, that it's not just about the physical health, but it's also about their mental wellbeing. Um, and we work with the idea of bringing joy to their lives and what we like to call positive disruption or positive distraction. Uh, so really changing uh, the atmosphere of, of where they are when they're in the healthcare setting, wherever that may be. Um, you might have heard of some of our programs. The original one was wish granting. So the idea of uh, granting a wish that started 30 years ago and, and still is involved today. But we also have dedicated programs for, on, for adolescents, such as Livewire, which is both in hospitals and an online safe community. Um, and probably our most well-known program is our Captain Starlight program. So these are professional performers who come from creative backgrounds. Uh, a lot of them are either performers or artists themselves, uh, comedians, um, all kinds of things. Um, they're trained specifically to work with children in healthcare settings. We have over 160 now, right across Australia. You will see them based mostly in hospitals, but more and more stepping out into the community. Uh, their main role, as I said, is what we call the positive distraction or positive disruption, to bring moments of joy and fun and laughter to a sick child or a chronically ill child. We have um, similar, I guess, uh, to the Indigenous community and importance in the idea of mythology. Uh, Captain Starlight is Captain Starlight no matter if they're male or female or where they are. The centre is one person. The costume's very important. Uh, every day uh, the rocket ship Starlight arrives on Earth and usually lands on top of a hospital. Um, and then the idea behind the captains is that children have to explain to them how the world works because they've just arrived. They don't know what happens. And this is a beautiful moment because it actually gives children who've lost a lot of control in a health setting the opportunity to, to take control. They're in charge. They tell the captains what's happening and how a door handle works or all kinds of things. And so it's a really important part of the whole program, the mythology behind it. So as I mentioned, more and more though, the captains are getting out in the communities. Uh, it's something that's been worked on for a while and we 
are doing it in partnership. And we particularly, I'd like to tell you as background to this project, we have a program called our Healthier Futures Initiative. Um, and it's a partnership to support health professionals, clinicians who are working out particularly in remote and rural communities. Um, so for example, Dr. Bo, who spoke this morning, if you're watching her presentation, you might have caught a glimpse on one of her slides of one of the captains. The captains are very involved in Maningrida and other remote communities uh, with rheumatic heart disease. Their role is to attract the children to the clinics and to entertain them and engage with them while they're waiting, or sometimes for other uh, areas, for uh, if they're having painful procedures, they might actually distract them or keep them calm, depending on what the need is. So they work very closely with the health professionals to try to support the clinical work that's being done and to make it a, a more positive healthcare experience for the children involved. Um, as you can imagine, art is a big part of that. They take a lot of art and craft activities with them. The captains are the most amazing improvisation. Impro Improvisers, improvisers. They can, uh, you know, turn a turn a leaf into a game, uh, turn anything into artwork, and that's often what they do with the children. Um, so we talk about them as having Cape will travel. Uh, we partner with whoever needs us. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the great work of the Earbus Foundation, for example, in WA. So when you heard uh, Dr. Kelvin Kong yesterday talking about Otitis Media. Uh, Starlight have been in partnership for over three years now with the Airbus Foundation and again they go out where children are having their ear health checks done and provide that um, uh, distraction while they're waiting, distraction during procedures. Uh, and we're involved in a whole lot of fly in and fly out um, programs around, around remote and regional areas. Um, it's the commitment to um, the Indigenous community is something that Starlight takes very seriously. And, and last year, we were proud to launch our first reconciliation plan. And I wanted to put it up there, this note, particularly because part of that plan actually noted the importance of um, arts in health as well and culturally specific initiatives as well. So that's something that Starlight has taken very seriously and adopted into our arts in health program. So as I mentioned earlier, we do have a dedicated arts in health program and a dedicated staff member who spends a lot of her time looking at how she can enhance our programming and what great projects she can do around Australia. Um, it's very much the cornerstone of the work we do, uh, just as on a day-to-day -day basis, but we also do specific programs which are fantastic. So everything from we've done an amazing adolescent program where it was Design Your Alter Ego, where young people with chronic illnesses, and particularly hospital-bound children, or young adults in this case, worked with an artist to come up with an alter ego, um, with some amazing artworks. Uh, we've had a, a pet photo shoot, <laughs> because when children in hospital were asked what was the thing they missed most, it was their pets. So we had pets brought in and did an incredible photo shoot with them so they could have them on the walls. Incredible murals throughout a number of hospitals. Uh, and one of my personal favourites was a pop-up installation at the old Princess Margaret Children's Hospital in Perth, where the oncology ward children woke up one morning to open their blinds and surrounding them were 250 pink flamingos. <laughs> So she comes up with some amazing creative initiatives uh, to, and also uh, very much at the heart of it is empowering the patients, letting them choose and what they want to do. So I wanted to talk about bringing, I guess, those two areas together, our work with the Indigenous and remote rural communities and now Arts in Health today. Um, before I get to the, the Deadly Threads project, I wanted to just give you a quick insight into one that we ran last year, which was an Indigenous artist in residence. Um, so what we realised, in particularly in Perth in the hospital, uh, was Princess Margaret's now the Perth Children's Hospital, is there are a lot of children coming from remote and regional communities who were talking about feeling quite anonymous in the hospital. Um, there was some very nice feedback that quite often they recognised the captains from the visits in their communities. So when they got into the hospital, that was the one point of familiarity and connection, but that there was a loss of connection with their own community. So the concept came up with was to have an Indigenous artist in residence to help bridge that gap and to make sure we did inclusive cultural and artistic um, activities. So Jay Dolman uh, was based there for a number of weeks, based in our Starlight Express room. Uh, she created artworks with both uh, Captain Starlight and the Livewire, the adolescent program. Um, the outcomes were three large communal wall canvases, but there were also a lot of individual rock paintings which the children could either keep, take back to their ward or back to their community with them, um, or became part of a very large outdoor rock installation, which you can see there on the right. 
never going to get the point. Of that one. So they did some amazing work. There are some terrific outcomes of this program. So around the cultural content, the feelings of inclusion, um, and the, the impact on well-being and mood, uh, very similar to what Heather was talking about, the benefits of art earlier came through. It helped to promote greater understanding and awareness and it took, it started a lot of conversations in the hospital, which we thought was a really important outcome. And what we noticed in our own style at Express Room was the increase in traffic of not only Indigenous children, um, but also Indigenous staff members, which was a, a great outcome too. So the hospital really benefited from it in the broader community. But let me get to the... Uh, to the main subject today, which is a fantastic project called Deadly Threads. And I actually have to acknowledge Emma in the room because I believe she named it back in the day. Emma now works with Earbus, but was originally with Starlight. Um, this is a program based at the Alice Springs Hospital. Do we have anyone from Alice here? Oh, hello. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you both. Um, this has been an incredibly wonderful collaboration and supportive, um, supportive partnership with this hospital. But let me give you a bit of the background of, of why we went ahead with this specific project. So a large percentage of the paediatric admissions uh, into the Alice Springs Hospital are from, for the five to 12 year olds, are from remote communities. Now, as happens quite often with hospital admissions, they happen suddenly. So these families are often literally thrown on a plane, flown into Alice without time to pack, without time to prepare, so often come without basic clothing and other items. Uh, so the children uh, end up wearing the hospital issued sort of standard blue pyjamas and that's, and that's what they remain in sometimes for a very long periods of time. So they're kind of without their own sense of identity amongst other things. Um, any child going into a hospital would be able to articulate the fear that's associated with that, um, the being uncomfortable, the sense of disconnection. But what we found for the Indigenous children in these situations was an even greater, a greater sense of that, the fear, uncertainty, such an unknown experience, such being in a, in a city, let alone um, being in a hospital. Um, so a lot of disconnection from culture and country came about. So in thinking about how we might have helped to address that through one of our programs, we actually looked to uh, a sister organisation of ours, which is uh, the Starlight organisation in Canada, who'd produced this amazing project in 2016 called Ward Plus Robes. Um, in the US and in Canada, it's, it's actually more common when you're checked into hospital to be given a hospital robe to wear for the time you're there. And they're incredibly ugly and felt quite disempowering for adolescents. So Starlight got involved over there and came up with this idea that the teenagers could actually create their own robes. Um, there's just two examples of what they did. There's actually a pattern online, so they could, if they knew they were coming, they could start pre-designing their own robes. So an incredible uh, program uh, which was uh, well, well received. But when we looked at it, that was our inspiration. It didn't quite translate over here, so we needed to adapt it. So in order to do that, we liaised with the key stakeholders at, um, at the Alice Springs Hospital, including particularly the Aboriginal Liaison Officer, the staff, the nurses, people on the ground, but also, of course, the families and the children and spoke to them about what we could do. Um, we brought them in and out at different crucial stages in the design and logistics. We also had to talk, interestingly, in great detail to the laundry. Uh, when you try and do something like this creativity, there's often the practical aspects, as you were talking about logistics, that come to the fore. And in this case with pyjamas, it was the laundry. So the pyjamas had to fit within the laundry system. So they had to be a certain size, a certain quality. They had to meet infection control, for example. So a lot of practical um, aspects to overcome. So there were a lot of uh, really important stakeholders and not necessarily who we think they would be. Um, and we also, and I'll talk more about the design in the moment, but we also were asking for feedback on the design throughout the way. Um, so these are some of the obstacles and opportunities I mentioned, and for example, in infection control, working within that hospital system, even the logistics, things like getting large amounts of pyjamas to Alice Springs is actually quite challenging. <laughs> so we had to go into some detail, the time, the delivery, the quality and movement of the fabric was interesting. We were limited by how many colours we could use. But probably the most important thing was the actual design that went on the pyjamas. Um, so it was a recognition and realisation that there were quite a large number of different Indigenous communities who were accessing the hospital, and that it was important to be inclusive to all of them, as well as to the non-Indigenous children in the hospital as well with the design. So there wasn't kind of a, a 
number of design elements that we could combine in an appropriate way. So what we did was actually look to another project Starlight had done, which was working with the Galimba, a creative agency in Queensland, who are an Indigenous agency, who'd come up with what they call the Starlight Story, which is Indigenous um, um, inspired designs telling the stories of Starlight and the work that Starlight does through these motifs. And so I won't go through them all, but you can see they've been designed to represent, and when they're presented together, they form a circle around the child, and the idea is that they cannot all exist without each other. They must work in unison together to make sure that the child shines. So these are the different ones, which I particularly love, um, the uh, partnership, the appreciation, so the sense of thank you, and Starlight. And part of having these design motifs on the pyjamas was actually to promote a conversation. So a health professional could talk to the child or even a family member could talk to the child about what was on the pyjamas. So using that creativity as a way to connect with them but also connect them to their culture. So here we are. The pyjamas were finally launched in January this year in the Alice Springs Hospital in the Starlight, new Starlight space that's up there. I love the fact there was even a cake done in the design. Not a lot left by the time the photographer got there. Um, but so they've only been recently launched, but so far the feedback has been really, really positive, which is wonderful. Um, the bright colours and the playfulness of them has been one of the um, key factors that we've had reported back to us. Often the blue pyjamas felt very institutional, so the ability um, to just be represented as kids was a very important part of this design that has come across and we're hearing that particularly from families, just allowing kids to be kids, the joy, the fun of it. Um, we've also had the nurses wearing them, which is incredibly wonderful and supportive. I think they were doing it initially to kind of promote it and, and now they quite like them. I'm not sure we'll get them back, but that's okay. Um, and what has happened is people literally coming to the Starlight Room going, can we have a pair, can we have a, can we have a pair? So that's been a wonderful um, experience for everyone invo involved, particularly the Starlight team have loved being part of that. So what's next? Uh, well, create, connecting community one set of pyjamas at a time, really. Uh, we're currently in talks, I believe, with the hospital in Catherine about also having the pyjamas there and available. And we're very open to any other hospitals who'd be interested in the project as well. Um, we'll continue on our uh, mission of producing more um, arts and health initiatives as we can. Um, I'm very excited that in the next few weeks I'm going to be sitting on a panel to offer a PhD scholarship to an Indigenous researcher who's going to be looking at the role of laughter, community, arts, fun, play in promoting health and wellbeing in Indigenous children. Um, I don't know if it's too late to put in a bid for anyone else if they want to get it in, but uh, that's going to be happening soon. So this is Starlight and The Witcher have come together to offer this PhD scholarship and I can't wait to see what comes out of that. It's going to be fantastic. And we're constantly seeking other partners for our Healthier Futures initiatives. So more partnerships to take our captains out to community and help with clinicians and bring our arts and health initiatives out to them. Thank you. Thank you for listening.